Nina, would you call the roll, please? Joel Fair. Here. Kathy Parks. Here. Marlene Woodside. Here. Tim Bass. Here. Absent for meeting, Larry Holmes and Barbara McPeak. All right, thank you. This is the time in our meeting for public participation. Is there anyone in the public who would like to participate? All right. So everyone had a chance to look at the meeting minutes from last meeting? Yes. Any questions about that? Okay. Someone like to make a motion to I approve the meeting? We accept them as, as written. Second. Motion, motioned and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 You in favor? Did you say? Aye. Perfect. I'm sorry. That's all right. All right. Meeting minutes are approved. All right, we have uh, interviews for board applicants that we will send recommendations to uh, city council for. I'd like to call up uh, Mike Truitt. Hi, Mike, how are you? <laughs> Maybe just uh, take a few minutes and share with us who you are, uh, how long you've been a resident in Cape Canaveral, and. Uh, why you would want to be on the Culture and Leisure Services Advisory Board. Sure. Thanks. Hello, everybody. I'm Michael Truitt. And uh, I've been in Cape Canaveral for a little bit more than a year now. About, a, uh, about 12, 13 months now. But this will be my 13th month, the, end of this, uh, the beginning of this next few month. And um, I was originally uh, lived in Orlando, but I moved to uh, L.A. I was out in L.A. for, uh, for a few years. And... Uh, Moved back here, and um, I have my uh, my folks here on, on in Palm Bay area, so I'm familiar with the coast here. And if you get a little older, you know, you start to slow down a little bit. Orlando's a little too fast for me, and um, so I settled here, and um, I love this little city. And it's uh, I've always passed through it very fast. You know, you can just go right through this area. And um, just move extraordinary. That's the best way. <laughs> um, I, since uh, partaking with uh, the ball field, I've put about 26 volunteer hours in already. And I, it's something that I do. Um, I was a fireman. I was an EMT. Uh, I know what it's like to serve, and I serve well. Um, Actually, on 9-11, I, this lady was ODing. I pulled into a parking lot to get some food, and this, this Uber driver was trying to help this lady, and she was ODing. Mm. And I had to step mm. in. I didn't want to, but I had to, because I had no choice. Mm. I'm that type of guy. You know, there's a lot of people that usually don't do that, and would just say, hey, look, let me step back. But I'm the guy that does. Um, I take pride in a lot of stuff that I do and everything that I do, even trying to maintain the field for kickball, because those guys are very demanding. So... Um, I want to serve some more, and I would definitely like to serve the community that I live in because it's the community that I live in, and I need to make it nice so I can enjoy myself. Yeah. That's good. So, um, I definitely uh, am here to help out to volunteer. Uh, just don't work me too hard. That's all I ask. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Any questions for Michael? You sold me, Michael. <laughs> I, all I had to say was, you sold me. Thank you very much. Thank you. If I could, if I could just add, you know, it's it's funny because the way he expressed it, it it's hard to understand. But Michael's the first guy that's come out and said, "Hey, uh, what do you guys need on the field? I'm willing to just go out there and help." So we had to find him a job. Uh, so we're like, "Well, would you like to line the field?" And he's like, "Yeah." So he's helping. You know, our maintenance guy go go out there and maintain the field, but he's saving everybody some work by going out there and actually lining it 
And because he's in direct contact with the players, it's making a huge difference in that interaction, you know. Uh, so I, I applaud that because I've never had anybody outside of court order say, hey, can I come work for you guys for free? <laughs> That's a first. So. I do. Yeah. I enjoy working on that field. It is such a stress relief for me. It totally is. And I enjoy it. I was, I was going to jump on too because uh, I live directly across from the field. I've seen you out there, Michael, okay, so and you, okay. you're killing it, man. Uh, seriously, hauling that mat around that the kickball has used, that Little League, so I'm with a Little League, and that mat's great. It's super helpful because it keeps them from digging holes, keeps yeah. the kickball guys from digging holes, but it's heavy and it's tough. So, man, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, ab absolutely, you're already serving, and uh, it means a lot to us. So, thanks a lot. Guys, too much, please let me know because I'll, yeah. I'll help try to curve it. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's good. All right. Thanks, Michael. Thank Appreciate it. We have a, another applicant, Angela Trulock. If you wouldn't mind coming up, introducing yourself, and tell us why you'd like to serve on the board with us. Um, I've been coming to Cape Canaveral since 2005, been a permanent resident since 2014, and um, I just like all the changes that are coming to Cape Canaveral. Um, I walk everywhere. Um, I don't have much of a choice, so, but anyway, I walk. And so, you know, I do notice the metal sculptures, the murals. Mm. Um, and I, I just like all of that and would like to see more of it. And the parks, you know, all of the parks, Manatee Park, Patriot Park, I mean, you know, so um, I just love this community and would like to help in some way. Awesome. I can't with mats, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Not everybody can. I can't either. That's... <laughs> so, and I love, I can't wait for the new uh, multifunctional. Mm -hmm. um, rec center because I go to the rec center um, three or four times a week. Okay, <laughs> so fantastic. Zuma class. Fantastic. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments for Angela? Mm -hmm. Looks like we've had your application for a little bit, so we haven't we haven't been meeting as often. But now we're now we're back into a regular schedule. Thank you for applying and okay. your patience and waiting, and uh, we're excited about it. Awesome. Thank you, Angela. The next action item, action item three, is a uh, civic scenery program. So we've been given, um, sorry, thanks. You'll need to make a motion to, to recommend. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, I'll go ahead and I will make the motion to recommend uh, both Michael Truitt, or is it Truitt? Yes. Michael Truitt and Angela Trulock uh, for, to the City Council for their approval and to the advisory board. Second. Second. Approve, absolutely. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, guys. Action item three, civic scenery program. You have a booklet in front of you. Uh, we're going to review and select sculpture for installation at the Canaveral Public Library. And there's seven different sculptures, uh, three by the first artist, Marvin Mackey, and then it looks like four by the second artist, Rafael Picon. Has everybody had a chance to uh, look at the bios and also review the sculptures? Yes. All right. Well, then we will open the floor to uh, first, probably just some comments on, on the sculptures. So, yes, I believe so. Absolutely, we would invite it. Would you mind coming up to the front and? <laughs>
I will echo the other speakers that I think a lot of what you've done in beautifying the city is fantastic. Awesome. I've been here for almost 50 years, and lately it's, it just, it's blossoming. Wow. Oh, I appreciate it. I'm a little concerned about the sculptures. I'm the head of the Friends of the Cape Canaveral Library. Okay. And have been since 1992. What's your name, ma'am? Evelyn Reed. Evelyn. Yeah. Nice to meet you. And what I'd like to say, we all, everybody at the library, we are looked at it. The library is a place of education. It's wonderment. It's learning. It's not expressed in any of these. Okay. A bicycle. <laughs> right. You know, if we're gonna, and you do have some really nice stuff, but if we're gonna put a sculpture in front of it, let it have some meaning. Express what's in the building, because it's a very important building. Yes, ma'am. So you wouldn't recommend that any of the seven? I'm sorry? Is there one of the seven that you, uh, you saw that you thought was, no? Okay. <laughs> okay, all right, well, thank you, Evelyn. Any questions for Evelyn before she starts? And this is Shelley, who is the general manager of the library. Okay, and well, there we go. All right. <laughs> Hi. Hi. My name is Shelley Macon. I'm, I'm the new head librarian at the Cape Canaveral Library. Been there for about a month and a half now. Um, it's a beautiful little library. It is. And I would just like to see. Um, that any sculpture that we put there really expresses the beauty of the city and the library. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, did you see all seven? I did. Okay. Were there any that you were <laughs> you thought? Um, <laughs> of the seven, I know that um, not everybody in the library agreed, but I, okay. I thought the mathematician okay. uh, was the best, but, um, you know. Okay. Well, thank you. So, you know, I think, I think maybe there's something out there that that would be just uh, even more amazing. Okay, awesome. Okay. Thank you, Shelley. Thank and you. Could we ask questions to the public? Yes. Is that allowed? I think so. All right, to, to the two speakers that just spoke, I like that you said the mathematician because that was kind of what I was gonna say, especially based on Ms. Evelyn's comments. But, uh, you know, it, it it's a little abstract, but it does kind of inspire the thinking about it and oh looking for numbers or looking for the little symbols that are within that what and I know you said if you had to pick that would be one but you think we should probably put out another call Miss Evelyn what do you think about the mathematician Right. I'm sorry I couldn't hear you she said why weren't there letters instead of numbers when she first saw it oh, oh. And then I guess the oh, yeah. obvious question to ask the librarians is in response or in regard to the stairway to knowledge that is just a stack of books with a book open on top of it. Do, do y'all have any comments on, on that one and the propriety in front of the library? And to add one note to that one, the top book could be customized as to whatever we want it to be. Right. No, that's a good answer. Now, I, I didn't want it right or wrong. I was just asking for your input. Sure. Well, it is called stairway. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I may I mm -hmm. say what absolutely. what I like and why. Sure. Um, I absolutely appreciate your your thoughtfulness and certainly in coming here and and. Uh, giving us your opinion, that's very important. I too have been here many, many years. I've lived here over 50 years now. So I kind of grew up with Cape Canaveral and, and uh, goodness, the, the changes I'm sure you can certainly relate to as well. But I think what we need in our town is to continue the improvements that we're making, certainly in the in the art form of every kind, because it makes it gives us a quality of life, and it gives us a quality of recognition, which many many towns have achieved, but we have not until now. Now we're getting there, 
and it's very important to incoming uh, businesses and business people. They're, uh, they're looking for these things for education for their children and for their own enjoyment. And we're getting there. We're going to have a place for people to come and view art and to sit and have a sandwich and a cup of coffee and that sort of thing. That's terribly important. But here's what's most important to me. Um, there's a piece here of sculpture that the second I looked at it, and of course I'm a child of the space program, um, grew, you know, I, I was still in my 20s when I moved here. And I think we need to stay on that road that guides us and everyone coming in to the knowledge that we are the space program. We are where it began. We want to keep that. That's recognition worldwide. And it's terribly important. Before our little town, we have come so far, so very far. I can't even repeat to you some of the things that I've heard said, and even now, trying to improve our reputation. And, and I believe we've done it. But there's a piece here that that is a sculpture. It's the male sculpture. And I'm not going to tell you all right now, because I don't know if I'm supposed to. Uh, but it. It features a beginning and an ongoing, like the space program is. And these pieces are all wonderful. These artists are all wonderful. And they all deserve recognition. But I think, I, I have to disagree with, with what we put at the library. I think the library is, stands alone as it is, uh, as a feature of its own just as our city hall is. But these pieces are going to say, this is who we are. This is our library. This is our town hall. This is Cape Canaveral. And, and I find a piece here that, that says all that. So that's how I feel about it. Well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> there's a, a time for any other comments for the board. Um, if there's any particular pieces that you would like to to talk about, highlight, and then we'll move uh, to voting on our ballots. Um, I think one of the things to keep in mind is that this is a rotating sculpture. So even if at first um, not all of us are happy with the first sculpture, it is a two-year program, that then in July of 2023 we get to put out uh, another call for more artists. And so if if in that time you find something else or someone else that's an artist, you, I mean, we would be able to, to reach out to those people at that time. So um, what we've been given is these seven options. And so um, I know that for, for myself looking at them, uh, I, I like the mathematician one. I think it, it, while it is numbers, there are a lot of numbers also at the library. Um, the Dewey Decimal, we'll just call it that. Um, maybe we rename it or something. Um, <laughs> but I think, I think there's some options there. Um, so just thinking about these, you know, what, what, any other thoughts from you guys? Well, I, I would just say I, the reason I, I picked up on the mathematician was that was the first one that caught my eye as something that especially considering children looking at it, it it's it would seem to inspire more. And I have to tell you, I really wanted to like Venus and Neptune because it's space related. But you know, I just and this is completely subjective. I, I don't think it really would would inspire any curiosity or knowledge building on the part of the children or the passersby and. You know, especially the, the volunteers uh, who have to walk by it almost every day. <laughs> uh, Miss Evelyn, thank you for your volunteer service to the library. Absolutely. And, um, you know, and, and then, the, and I know I'm talking very heavily about the second artist. Uh, I'll say on the first artist, again, thinking about the, 
I guess what I, I see is the intent to fold one to beautify the city and, and two to really further um, interest from kids, especially considering the location and how close it is to the school. Um, I think maybe the first artist, while the work is certainly beautiful, it's a little more abstract. Um, and I, I noted one of them look, almost looks like he just took the, the NASA vector and then swirled around it. <laughs> and so I thought that actually <clears throat> made it a little corny <laughs> for one in particular. Um, but yeah, all in all, I, I think that any attempt we have at beautifying the city is great. And if we can find one that also acts to inspire the children and make the people who pass by it every day maybe not love it but at least a little more comfortable with it um i think that would be great thanks tim molly would you tell me again exactly where the statue is going to be The portico of the library has mm -hmm. a small flower bed on mm -hmm. the exterior side where you pull through. That was once the home of a fountain, a closed circuit fountain for a very long time that was either vandalized or collapsed under the weight over time. Um, nobody's really sure, but it will be right inside of that. Um, I don't know what those plants are called. I would just call it kind of a, a hedge. Uh, yeah, like a fern. Like a fern hedge. It would go in the center underneath the portico. Okay. Thank you. That's right, by where you drop off the books, if you yeah, slide them through. Yeah. <laughs> Guess I have another question. If we were to uh, vote for the Stairway to Knowledge, who would pick the, the title for the book at the top? Because that would be one customization that we could make. And I mean, my recommendation would be that Maybe the library gets the say of that, it being right outside. I, I'm just trying to think through some of those things. Um, I like that idea. Okay. All right. Because it, it, it could be a book that's not been written. That's good. I think we had another public comment. Too, yes, so. uh, Mr. Tritt. Please come up to the... <laughs> 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 solution maybe would be uh, having some of the children at the library pick something mm. or have a drawing or contest or even something with the elementary school. That's good. That's a thought. Yeah, thank you. Well, any other discussion before we move to uh, voting on our ballots? Was that discuss further the pieces? Mm -hmm. okay. My following protocol there if, looks if, like if you need to discuss further or if you're ready to move forward, okay, because you also have the option to, to have me put out another call for artists. That is one of the options on your ballot, so. okay. And well, if I may, I like I probably over talked before I'm good at that. Um, I think it should represent, as I said, us, all of us, not just children. I think that children would probably be less interested in a piece of sculpture and more interested in what the library offers. I think that it, it should say, this is who we are, everybody. I, I think it should, and because, like you said, it's only gonna, how long is it gonna be there? Two years. Just two years. Um, and there are certainly requirements for how it's supposed to hold up and how good it is against the wind and all that. You've already checked that out. So that's done. Um, I truly believe that it should not just be voted on by one segment. Certainly there are others than, than us, right? Nope, we're it. Uh, <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. This is wow. the most important thing we'll do all year. Okay, then I'll just talk on. I'll talk on then. Let me, the let me say the wise. Yeah. I do not think we should have anything like the stack of books. Though, no, I appreciate every artist. I am an artist, have been for many, many years. I appreciate everything they've done, and they're all beautiful. Our choice then has become much more important. And I don't want it to look funky, and I don't want it to look childish. I want it to look very 
sophisticated, because we are a sophisticated society here. We have engineers, scientists, we have, the whole world knows who we are and where we are. So we, we, we're obligated to, if, if we're to choose, we're obligated. And so through my, I, I will say, I love the peace. I don't know if I'm supposed to do this. Am I supposed to say what I like? Um, you've been given ballots, so when you're ready to make a decision, just go ahead and mark what you would like on there. I'll pick them up, tally them, and okay. Joel well, can, can I can I say why? Yeah, I is like there it? any reason why she couldn't name a piece oh, that no. she likes? Y yeah, you can just you can so choose to be anonymous. Things. We've already done up. we've already done it. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, I like uh, artist Marvin Mackey. Submission A, title Momentum, mm -hmm. and I think I've already said why I I like Momentum, because we have. We represent the space program here. And this, as an artist, has no beginning and it has no end. You see, and as you look at a, a work of art, you look at it first for what you feel like when you look at it, what it does for you. And then you know now we have this responsibility because we're representing Everybody. So we go to his other pieces, and they're good. They're all good, but what do they represent? There's a, a body lying there with two prongs coming up. That's a little dangerous, I think. Okay, well, then we have, they're very beautifully done, beautifully. But it's a person, that's how you interpret it, lying over, sad. That's my interpretation of it, the bicycle, tricycle is history. Um, we can go, this, this looks like Picasso here with the, the numbers. Um, the, with, this is uh, Raphael Picone. I, re, I recall meeting him. Uh, he lives locally, and uh, he's a very good artist. I think he did the piece um, they put up. It was a Spanish design a Spanish, I don't know what it was anymore. He's but most noted locally for the uh, Ponce de Leon. Yes, yeah. yes. The, the bronze in Melbourne. Yeah, thank you. But they're all good, as I said, but I have, if we have to make a choice, I want to make an educated choice. My education tells me that Marvin Mackey's piece, Momentum, should be it. It, it just says everything to me. And can I ask a question to Molly on it? Mm -hmm. In the maybe just something to consider for future calls. Maybe mm -hmm. could we add in a place for the artist to talk about each specific, like the motivation or the inspiration or what it means to them? And not saying that we would take that, but mm -hmm. we have a few artists up here, and I, I do feel like that might be a valuable thing because. You know, I guess as a poet laureate, like if I had that, I could play around and work with something to have a plaque or whatever. Um, you know, and I mean, I, I could probably do it without their inspiration, but it would be great to have the, and I think we did it for the murals, right? Yes. Where, where we asked them to kind of describe why they chose what they chose. And I think something like that might be real good here as well for the next call. Absolutely. I, I'm not I've trying already, to say we need to redo it now, but <laughs> well, I've, well, I'm, a, yeah. I'm like way ahead of you because this the this program is actually this is round one, round two through ten is going to take place provided this this is successful. Okay. Um, that's why we're starting with just one. Um, the need was there. There was no putting back the fountain. Um, the fountain was con constant maintenance issue anyway because. Water evaporates, motors burn up. If you have a pool, you know all about that here in the last couple of weeks. Um, but one of the things, there's, there's three different things that I'm going to amend next time I put out a call for sculptures, um, even if it's this one, because <laughs> when I say that you have the option to put another call for sculptures out, you do, and it can still be completed within this fiscal year, so you aren't losing anything. It, it just all it's a, a matter of doing is me revamping with the lessons learned already. Um, one of those is to not restrict um, as far as we did as far as production or when the item was produced anyway. 
and also I'd be removing that it had not been displayed in Florida. We're not big enough to, to make those kind of limitations yet. When the, the program grows, then we can start picking and choosing, but we're not at the pay, point right now where we can be super picky about you know, where artists are coming from. Right. So um, adding an artist interpretation is one of the things that I've already added okay. to the draft form, but also um, some more, more biographical information because when we say write a short bio, Short bio, <laughs> for me, may be different from a short bio for you. So we'll, right. I, I want to get a little bit more of the artist's identity because that is really important on how you're going to interpret that statement that they produce. So right. there's, a, there's a lot of different ways that I plan to improve this for the next call, and if we go out for a call immediately, those, those will go into effect immediately. And I, I think that... It's in great hands, and you've done wonderful with what you got. I just, yeah, that was my thought, and you've already covered it. It's so way ahead of me. No, I'm, I, I, that's, that's the stuff I think about at night. <laughs> like, how can I do this differently? Now? All right. Any more discussion on the pieces that we have in front of us? No. All right. Well, then I would recommend um, we. We'll mark our choices on the provided ballot, and then Molly will come and collect the ballots. So real quick, do we put one through three? Do we just put one? one? Just, just, just one. one? OK. Do you need to know who voted? You made that far too simple, Molly. We, we could have assigned different point values, and it could have been a lot more fun. <laughs> oh. Let's see what you did there. All right, the majority is uh, none of the above, and we request that Molly reissue the call for sculptures. Um, and again, that does, that could sound like we don't like what you've done. It's amazing. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you. Need, you will need to make a motion. Okay, um, so I would motion that we um, go with the majority vote that we pick none of the above sculptures and we reissue a call for more sculptures. I'll fuck it that. Um, I agree with that. It, you know, it's the, you have to. Right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And Molly, one question. It will incorporate those changes? Yes. From your end, okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yep. Thank you and so actually, much. Actually, while you guys were discussing, I created a... Um, draft timeline. Um, I can probably reissue with all of the changes uh, by October 15th. The call for artists will run for two months right up until um, December 15th. I believe our m first meeting after that would be after the new year, so that's actually kind of perfect. It gives a nice window where nobody has to do anything and everybody can attend to their holiday stuff. Um, and then uh, following that January meeting, provided we have quorum and, and have a, a good turnout for our call, the contract can be drafted immediately after and we can install by February, March, and we're still within our fiscal year. Fantastic. There's only one, one thing that I thought of. Let's just say the next time around, nobody agrees. And that's a possibility, mm -hmm. like what happened tonight. Is there a way you can you can verbalize it that I mean, how many times it can go on forever? Because nobody's ever going to, art especially is seen from so many different eyes, and it's possible we'll never agree. Can we, what can we do? I would at least be willing to try again and reevaluate from there. Um, I agree. One of the challenges that Gustavo and I have faced since we started working together is that 
while we have a, an amazing community filled with talented, very educated and creative people, a lot of people just come here to relax and enjoy what they, enjoy their passions. So to get people, everybody does know our name, but to remind them that we're not just rockets is, is what we're trying to overcome. So, oh, I didn't realize that. Yes, yeah. and, and getting, um, Tim, you were one of three applicants for our Poet Laureate. Uh, one of them was not a resident of Cape Canaveral, which automatically disqualified. Right. And the second one, um, his, his poetry highlighted a different area of the community than what the purpose of the um, initial Poet Laureate right. program was conceived for. And you guys were the only three that submitted. Right. So the more projects and programs that we come out with, even if we, we don't get a thousand responses on the first round, the more we put out, the more attention we're going to get. And eventually we will get to the point where we can say, well, if you're not a Cape Canaveral resident or you're not an artist here, or, you know, we, we can start laying right. down ground rules, but we do have to build the programs to build the reputation before we can really start hitting home runs. Right. And I, again, I think that you're doing great with all of this and it, we've made significant strides forward even in the 12, 13 years I've been here. I've seen dramatic difference made under under your lead, so. Thank you. You're doing great. I second that. <laughs> thank you. All right, well, thank you. Uh, the fourth action item on our agenda tonight is approved pursuance of Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program. So you have uh, the, this is, this one correct? About the roundabout? No? Okay. No, this is a very simple. Part of the Florida Recreation Development Assistance Grant, which is FERDAP, that's the acronym, um, is a um, approval and support from the Recreation or Leisure Services Governing Board to pursue the grant. Um, so it shows, obviously, City Council supports the program by putting it in the capital budget and willing to support it financially. But they also want to see that a representative board also supports redeveloping that playground and pursuing this grant from the from Florida Department of Environment for Protection FDEP. So um, that's the window opens tomorrow, and we have 15 days to complete the grant application. And uh, we have a hundred thousand dollars budgeted, um, which means that we can either go for the 50 or 75 um, thousand dollar grant. Usually a $50,000 grant does not require a match. Uh, in this case, we would be matching 50,000 anyway, so I would probably be going for uh, the full amount and uh, of like 75,000 because at that point we would match 25%. So it would be 25,000 to the city, 75 to um, FERDAP. And if you guys have been to Patriots Park, although not unsafe, it, it is a very old playground. Um, it was developed before, um, before maybe mulch existed. I don't know why it's all sand, but uh, it's all sand and it doesn't have a pedway through it. So just like you've seen everywhere else we've done, we want to make it uh, for the size that it is, a very accessible, very fun playground for everybody to be able to enjoy. And it is next to uh, our one and only community garden, which is awesome. So, you know, we, we want the area to represent um, to represent us. And, you know, in the, in the long-term picture of it, we will have a really cool nature park at the end of that road. If we can ever uh, finish all the permits, it's going to be a really cool elevated boardwalk with perhaps a kayak dock uh, akin to Banana River Park with a, a pavilion similar to Manatee overlooking the water. So there's some really neat things coming to that area. And um, so I, I, 
it's time to kind of replace that player and it's somewhat outlived its useful purpose. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, any further questions about what uh, what we would be approving? The city council has already budgeted this money. They're looking for uh, us to show that, yes, that's what we want, is then to go and pursue this grant for Patriots Park. Yeah, and it's it's next fiscal year. So it wouldn't be this okay. fiscal year. Uh, it, the project was moved to next fiscal year. Um, and that's perfect because that's what the grant would be for anyways. It would be the state 22-23 okay. fiscal year. Great. Thank you. Anybody else need any more information on that? Someone would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we pursue that grant. Okay. Second? Second. Second, thank you. Uh, the motion has been made and seconded to uh, approve the pursuance of the Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program grant for Patriots Park. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, thank you. Uh, we're on the staff reports. Gustavo. Um, well, I, I know for a fact all of you guys get the weekly update, and so I don't need to regurgitate everything that's being said, but um, the, the biggest news is obviously that um, the city of Cape Canaveral Community Center is full steam ahead. Uh, this upcoming fiscal year, which starts tomorrow, um, you know, the splash pad kicks on. Uh, refencing of the Little League Field project that kicks on to get that fence up to city code. Um, as if you've driven by there, you saw that the south parking's already done with a pedway, and that's just like that's just a um, the 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 beginning of things to come for that park. It's it's looking amazing, um, and the building itself to to see it come to fruition is really something else. We have uh, money budgeted for a weight room upstairs along a walking track. Um, so it, it's, it's going to be probably, in my humble opinion, the neatest community center in Brevard County for any community. Uh, there's some neat ones in other places, but nothing like this and nothing like what we're going to offer. Um, and like Marlene says, we want to be associated with things that are outstanding, and that's what this place is going to be. Um, and obviously, all our leagues continue. We will have Friday Fest tomorrow for the first time again. Uh, it's looking like it's going to be pretty packed uh, as far as vendors, but we are taking some COVID precautions as part of the event. We're separating vendors a little more. We've asked for an extra toilet. We've put a hand washing station. We're going to be putting hand sanitizer stations. Uh, Molly and um, Stephanie are going to have some free masks for folks to use, some free sanitizer, little packets if people want them. Um, so it should be a really awesome evening. So far the weather looks great. So welcome back to Friday Fest. And then uh, in two weeks our movie in the park. And then our monster mash. So we are back into event season. And, uh, and uh, good. so, yep, absolutely. <laughs> Sounds great. I have one question, Gustavo. Before you open this wonderful cultural center that you're building for everybody, would you give us all a private tour before it opens to the public? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that would be great. Yeah, uh, it's it's rough going in there right now because obviously, uh, a you require a hard hat. Oh, not now. And two, yeah, no. yeah. No, no. Uh, but absolutely, before yeah, because we we will have to. As they finish the place, there's a month uh, as they get close to finishing that we'll have to go in there and start training staff. And I mean, there's so much. I've opened three very similar facilities so far, none with a weight room. So that's a brand new challenge that I've never encountered. But um, absolutely. Thank you. Do you already have Manning for that, or will you be hiring? more people we will be hiring uh so far um there is one full-time rec leader in the evenings and there's two or three part-time positions okay. uh yeah. and aaron uh lighty who already um works with us as the uh 
uh, leisure services manager, he will be running that facility. Okay. Um, in the interim, however, he just got called back to active duty for six months. Uh, we'll, we'll have to, you know, work internally to just make that happen. And okay. so it's going to be rough without him, I'll be honest with you, but we'll make it happen. And uh, um, so, and so far we're anticipating late January for, for a grand opening late January. Um, I, I'm sure you guys know that um, at least off of the coast of LA, there's 500,000 container ships waiting to be un unloaded. So uh, nationwide, there is a shortage on everything. So we're having to deal with that. Uh, and, and that's putting a lot of stress on the construction crew trying to finish this project. Any other questions for Gustavo? All right. Thank you. Molly? Yeah. So I will try not to bore you with all of the weekly update stuff. Um, but you probably noticed on your way in here that there's some orange fencing around the oak trees. That's the beginning of the Cape Center. Um, we had to do... Uh, some minor trimming along the back side because the tree had grown over the roof, but the trees will be protected throughout the, the course of the construction process. Um, so that was step one. Step two is, uh, is doing the internal demolition, which will start uh, projected the second week of October. And um, I'm sure some of our stuff is on the container ships as well, but we're still projecting a completion date of early to midsummer 2022, either May, June, July, somewhere in that area. Um, I'm still working on our core documents for our accreditation. Um, that's, those are the documents that help guide the, how the facility runs, what we do in emergencies, how we manage collections, how we manage our programming, et cetera. Um, I'm also... Uh, working on the internal actual programming details. If you guys have any ideas, please shoot me an email. Um, it's way too early in the game to, to, to start really discussing anything in stone, but I'm always open to suggestions. If you hear people in the community say, man, I really wish I could do this and it's an arts program, let me know. If it's a history program, let me know. We're culture, arts, preservation, and enrichment. So if, if they want to work out, call him. But <laughs> if, if they want to sit and be creative or learn or, or anything like that, even if it's something um, as, as area specific as like genealogy or local history research, I, I want to know what the demand is because I know that I can just get in the car where I live in Coco and hop over to the Coco library or go down to the village and I can get all the local history I need. Our Cape Canaveral library has some stuff too. But if we can make stuff accessible between the library and the Cape Center, that people don't have to try to find their way to Coco to get, I can help do that. So um, please, if you, if you know people that even aren't email savvy, just tell them where I'm at. I'm, <laughs> you'll always find me here. Um, other duties and responsibilities of our department. Um, we are the lead on city communications. If you read the weekly update, that's us. Um, everybody, our other directors submit stuff, but ultimately that, that's coming out of our department. Um, we also are steady with social media and press. Um, none of that has changed beyond the addition of a bunch of different things that are going on in our community, whether it be um, the FDOT project, you have that paperwork in front of you. That was not created by us. It's not our project. But we are partners with the FDOT in helping get the communication to our residents so that they can be informed on what's, what's being planned and provide their input accordingly. Um, your next opportunity to, to really learn or discuss that with the FDOT professionals will be on October 5th, which is next week, at the Radisson. Uh, they've shared a little bit with what they have planned, and it's a very interactive experience, right down to matchbox cars, where you get to take them through the, uh, the different systems that they are proposing for the redesign for A1A. Um, let's see what else. Our department is still participating in monthly and bi-monthly uh, calls with Brevard County Emergency Management. Um, we are the communication system when you guys all have to evacuate. Um, 
or when there's any other type of disaster. So today we participated in a drill with St. Lucie um, for a radiological event. I never anticipated being able to add that to my resume, but I can now do that. Um, uh, also, we were working with the clerk's office. It's an election year, in case no one's noticed. And uh, we are constantly updating the web page and trying to keep the election info up to date. And we also, um, starting tomorrow, are the lead for the city's report of concern um, software. So we transitioned away from an application that was very underused and went to a more user-friendly uh, method. And that kicks off tomorrow. And that's now no longer code enforcement that runs that. That's community affairs. And when we get reports in, we disseminate it as, as needed. So that's about all I've got going on there. Oh, and I'm going to issue a new call for sculptures. <laughs> any, any other questions or comments from Molly? All right. Well, thank you, Molly. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Gustavo, jumping back real fast. The you guys working together with um, everyone that had a voice in. Uh, the redesign of that parking for you guys to be able to get that done and save all those trees that you saved was fantastic, man. Uh, just the, everybody that was involved in that did a great job. It looks fantastic. Really yeah. excited about it. So Molly, same thing with the Cape Center. You guys are working really hard, and it means a lot. So thanks a lot for all that work. Definitely. Happy to do it. Anything else for the group from anybody? I'll just say real quick, I think this is my last meeting as part of the board. I'm stepping down. All right. <laughs> just, uh, but, but it's been an honor to serve with y'all up here and under y'all. It, it's been great to get to know everybody a little bit and contribute to the community and appreciate the people coming to, to take up the slack for those who are <laughs> stepping down. But uh, thank you for the opportunity to serve and look forward to doing it again at a later time. Thank you, Tim. Thanks. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, I would motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn the meeting. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. I felt weird seconded in it since that's my last time. <laughs> 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 uh, like, that, that makes a lot of Oh, noise. man. Thank you. <laughs> I had no idea you were leaving. <laughs> Yes, I'm